Hey everyone, it's really good to see you guys again. Some of you may have noticed that I haven't posted any content or been around for about the last two weeks now. I've been absolutely AWOL. And the reason for this is because I've been living under my desk for the last two weeks. So here I am in all of my glory, you know, I'm ready to present myself as I am. The truth is I feel like there's a lot of changing energy going on in the world right now. And on one hand, we have a lot of fear and excitement. And on the other hand, there's a lot of fear and doubt. And for some reason, this last two weeks, you know, I just kind of chose to let the fear and doubt drive. And that's how I ended up under my desk. And that's how I ended up possessed by a lower level demon. No, 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 no. Ultimately, the demon ended up being my own projection of my own psychological earthquake. Um, and I kind of finished that battle by realizing that there was never a battle to begin with. But I'm still under my desk, and I'm still feeling a lot of fear and doubt in my life. And I think maybe you might be able to relate. So I decided to be courageous, and I decided to turn on the camera today. I find that sometimes the big picture is sometimes kind of scary, and it feels like there's a lot that needs to be done. But if I just take it in simple steps, and I start with just the first thing, I can create this chain reaction of energy that leads me in the right direction. And now I'm just feeling I'm just feeling like... Uh, I'm feeling like maybe it's time to come out from under the desk. Maybe there's a way that we can live our lives where we're not letting the fear and the doubt rule us, but instead we're letting our excitement and the joy and the love drive us. And this is exactly what was spoken to me straight from God above the desk. Nathan. You're stuck in a rut of your own creation. The divine is within you. You are God. Change your reality. Let go of the negativity. Use reality shifting. Ooh. Okay, God, I hear you, and I will. I'll, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to let this energy go. But first, there are a few things that I need to do before we shift out of this timeline. They just feel really important to me for some reason. Right where I left. So, now that I'm properly styled, lubricated, and strapped in, it's time that we can surrender and trust and surrender this over to our higher self to help us to reality shift. Because this isn't something that we need to work really hard on on this level, but our higher self can totally handle the whole explanation. So that's what we're gonna pass this over to. The first thing I thought I was supposed to do in order to make this big shift in my life was to have a picture and an idea of what I wanted to shift to. Boobs, boobs, really big, big boobs, a million dollars, fast cars, fa real fast cars, lots of boobs, big, lots of them. But it turned out that having that picture and that image of what I wanted to shift to was so, so big that it actually kept me pinned under my desk for more days than I even needed to be there in the first place. So now I've come to this position of awareness, and it seems like this is a great place to start. Awareness to what? Awareness to what I'm feeling currently and the energy cycle that I'm already feeling trapped in. Because here's the thing, when I'm trapped in this energy loop, in this energy cycle, every single thing that takes place in my life, I'm interpreting from the position of that energy. For example, I'm frustrated. I'm in a frustrated energy. So when someone in my life does something sweet, like for instance, Ruby and I are fully moved in together now, when she reaches her arm out to be loving, I instantly interpret it from a frustrated position. I instantly start getting upset at her. What do you think, Ruby? Uh, hey, 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 no sex till marriage. Jeez, tell him what, what you think, but like, don't touch me, okay? 
I think. So this is just one very, very small example of what it means. Because when I'm interpreting things from that energy, then I'm constantly creating more and more occurrences in my life and building myself deeper and deeper into that specific momentum, making it seemingly impossible to get out from under my desk. So now that I've got the awareness and I see that I'm in this energy loop and I feel what it feels like, the next question that I ask myself is what would I have to believe for this experience to be happening? Reality is manifested from the subconscious, from my core belief systems. These belief systems are creating my entire interpretation of the experience that I am having. So for me to be able to ask, what belief would I have to have to be able to be feeling this way, to be able to feel like I want to be living under my desk? To identify that belief is the most powerful start in the awareness that I could possibly have. So here I am, you know, I feel trapped. I feel stuck in what I'm doing. What would I have to believe in order for me to feel that way, in order for myself to feel trapped? That's the question to ask yourself. For me, what I would have to believe to be feeling the trap that I have been is I'd have to believe that I have to keep doing all of the things that I've set up for myself or things are gonna fall apart. I'd have to believe that if I don't keep up with what I've set out to do, everything is going to turn to absolute shit. Those are the beliefs that I would have to have. So there we go. I've just identified exactly what's keeping me stuck in this energy loop. So now it's time that I can actually reverse engineer that question. What would I have to believe in order for me to feel free? What would I have to believe in order for me to be absolutely liberated? What would I have to believe in order for me to climb out from under the desk? Well, I'd have to believe that everything's gonna be okay. I'd have to believe that I'm fully taken care of. I'd have to believe that there's nothing that I have to do for me to feel good and to be happy. That's what I'd have to believe. That's what I'd have to believe. The next thing that I personally do in a stage like this is I feel more into that version of me that has those beliefs that exists in the reality that I prefer to be in. And the next thing to do is to just let go of the idea of the beliefs and feel more into what does that version of myself feel like? What is that version of me feeling? And <laughs> it's come pretty clear to me that the version of me that exists on that timeline in that reality is just having fun. I'm just having fun. I'm really not worried about those things. Guys, look. Me and Nathan cleaned the van and now all my stuff is moved in. Nathan? Hello. He's so cute. But now it's messy out here, so we're going to clean that. But it looks so good and look at lightning. Look at him. This focus is so annoying. But look at him. So the next step is pretty simple. It's very simple. I hold that vibration. I hold that feeling within myself, but hold it loosely as to not create resistance. Hold it as if it's like a newborn child that gives you excitement, but you're not squeezing them so their eyes pop out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you're not holding on to the child for dear life. The child is kind of holding on to you to give it life. And it's very similar with the beliefs like this. So for me, the next step is to just have fun in my life, to allow myself to do the things that bring me joy. What I'd rather spend time discussing right here is more tips on how you can feel into what are those current beliefs right now that you have that are keeping you grounded to a reality that you don't prefer, just like me living under my desk for the last two weeks, because it isn't always easy to feel into them. It's not, I don't care what people say. For a lot of us, it's not really easy in the beginning. So here's a strategy that you can use to identify all of the current beliefs that you have right now, so that way you know exactly where to turn your attention to bring a dissolution to those beliefs. What 
we're gonna discuss here is something new that Ruby and I just learned and it's called muscle testing. Um, so some of you may have heard of this before, but essentially a way that we can look at it to have it give us more permission for it to be helpful is to realize that all the secrets of the universe are within us. Everything that we need to know is within us. And a lot of what's keeping us grounded in certain realities or having certain experiences of reality, however you wanna look at it, is stemming from our subconscious belief. But they're buried deep, you know? They're buried deep inside of us. It can be kind of hard to feel into. And that's where muscle testing can come in handy. So I'm gonna teach you how to do this real quick. We just learned ourselves and it's new to us as well, but it's really fun and I just couldn't not include it in this video. So what you're gonna wanna do is take your hand and you're gonna do like this symbol, like this, right? Pretty, pretty straightforward. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to take these two fingers on your other hand like this, right? So you have it like this and like this. Pretty straightforward. Now, what you're gonna do with this hand where it's the middle finger and the thumb is not squeeze or anything. You're just gonna relax. Just touch the fingers together and don't even think about it. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna come in with these fingers and you're gonna separate it like this. It's very simple. See that motion? Very straightforward. You can always rewind and, and watch back if you get confused with the hand gestures. So here's an example of how we can muscle test. Something that is vibrationally resonant with you is true to you, right? Stemming from your subconscious. So when it resonates, those vibrations move through your body and it creates this kind of tensing up kind of feeling. So things that are a yes answer when you ask them will give you a hard, firm grip. There will be a little bit of resistance. Whereas something that doesn't resonate with you, it'll open a lot more loosely. Now again, you're not squeezing hard with this hand. You're not thinking about it at all. When I found that it works best, if when I ask the questions, the yes or no questions, if I ask it with my eyes closed and I ask as if I'm asking the divine, as if I'm asking God, as if I'm asking a power, uh, quote unquote, outside of myself, inside myself, right? <laughs> but as if you're asking a force outside yourself, because that way you're not getting in the way of it. You can just relax and feel the experience happening. So here's some examples of some questions you might want to start with. Is my name Nathan? So see, there's a little bit of resistance. There's a certain way that it feels when I ask it a yes question. Is my name Scrotum McScrody Scrot? See, there, it's a lot more loose. Now, obviously you can suggest that I on the other end am doing this and you're right, I am, but I'm allowing my subconscious to do it. Not my conscious level, but my subconscious. So this is a great way that we can reach down into there. So what you can start doing, I recommend is ask a bunch of really simple questions that you already know are yes answers and no answers. That way you can get a better feel of what your body's response is. It might be slight, it might be extreme, to what is the yes or no. So it's kind of like a, the next level pendulum experience, basically. So what I've been doing is asking really interesting questions, you know, like, do I feel trapped in my reality right now, right? So I might get a little bit of a yes, and you can ask it a question that's relevant to you. Then what I can start doing is asking certain questions that might help to, you know, shed more light on this. Like, for example, I could ask, is my true passion making YouTube videos? and my fingers actually open all the way up. So I was baffled by this because I've been walking around thinking that my true passion is making YouTube videos for a long time. That's what I've been telling myself. But at the very least, my subconscious believes that it is not my true passion. Now I pushed it a little bit further and when I asked if making music was my true passion, there's that firm grip again, saying that yes, it's music is my true passion. As I continued to ask questions, I found out that, can I make money from playing music? <laughs> no, super loose response, right? So you can basically keep moving through. But here's something to keep in mind to help you to discern between what you wanna give power and what you don't wanna give power to. What we're dealing with here is our own subconscious beliefs, not necessarily blanket truth for reality, for everyone, or even for you and your true self. Because your true self isn't carrying all of these beliefs that weigh you down. Theoretically speaking, 
Perhaps your true self isn't identifying, labeling, or holding any beliefs at all, but is just simply completely solar consciousness and present in the moment. Perhaps. But we are here having this human experience. And when you're able to tap into your subconscious and what your subconscious believes, then it can tell you and it can show you, hey, maybe I'm experiencing resistance in my life, for example, because I'm pushing myself so hard to make YouTube videos when it's not my real passion, right? And this is just something I'm using as an example to share with you. Um, but here's another question, like there's so many layers to it. Does that mean it's time for me to listen to my subconscious beliefs and stop making YouTube videos and give myself fully to music? Or does it mean that I should go into my subconscious beliefs and change it so that making videos is my real passion? Does it mean that I should continue with music and try to change my subconscious belief that I can't make money? Because my subconscious beliefs are manifesting my experience in reality. You see what I'm saying? There's so many layers to it. What is the right direction to go? What's the wrong direction? <laughs> I guess that's kind of what it means to be human is to be in the driver's seat and sitting there and making choices and moving through life and experiencing all of the cause and effect from everything that we do. It's a pretty wild experience, isn't it? <laughs> So this is kind of where I'm at, you know, feeling more into my subconscious beliefs and realizing that my subconscious beliefs, the way that they are, after asking all these questions and feeling into it and feeling what resonates with me, my subconscious beliefs are very clearly directly in alignment with exactly what my reality feels like to me. What would I have to believe to be experiencing this as my reality? And when I ask my subconscious, all those beliefs match up exactly with why this is my experience and why this is what I feel about it. It's very interesting. <laughs> so right now, I'm in a big, big, big shift. There is a lot changing in my life and I'm not the only one. I know it's happening in your life too. And I cannot wait to see what happens next for all of us.